Hi team. Hi Char. Hi. Okay, I think um, so. Ashley and I were somewhere else apparently. <laughs> so it's good to good to know that we're in the right place now. But um, let me um, let me just have Jen um, add a sixth person so that we can get actually. Um, Kiona, do you mind unsharing so that actually no 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 don't don't do that. Um, Jen, can you add a sixth panelist? Actually, can join. Um, in the meantime, um, I am going to go ahead and kick off the session um, and then I'll drop off and then Ashley can, uh, can come. Oh, there she is. Yay. Perfect. Hello. Hey, Ashley. Um, Ashley and I were literally at the other session. Like, it's just the two of us here. Parallel universe. <laughs> exactly. Well, um, thank you so much um, to everybody for joining us today um, and apologies for a little bit of the tech that we experienced, but we're glad that you're all here and joining us. Um, Hi, by way of Oh, yes. Hi, I'm so sorry. So we have a couple of other panelists. So we have Eddie, Casey, and then Elise. So we have three other ones, if we're oh. able to get them. Okay, so um, Kat did max it to 10. Um, and so um, let's see. Let's see here, please. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna max it at ten so that more folks can um, t can join in. Okay, um, okay, awesome. Well, again, thanks so much for uh, bearing with us as we kind of manage this. Um, uh, my by way of introduction, uh, my name is Shar, and I am the executive director at URX as well as I lead the university recruiting program at Robin Hood. And I'm really excited to just welcome the team at Xander today who's going to be talking to us about how to stand out as a candidate in the advertising and analytics space. Really exciting topic. So um, uh, I'd love if everybody in the audience can just drop in the comments um, what school you are um, attending and uh, what city you're dialing from. I think our panelists would really love to um, you know, see where our audience is, uh, where our audience is around the world. So if you can drop that in the comments, that would be great. Um, with that being said, I'd love to pass it over to the Xander team to provide some intros. Um, and then I'll kind of hop on, um, about five minutes, um, until noon, uh, to help with any questions that roll in. Okay. Good luck team. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. Nice to see you all, even though I can't actually see you, but thank you for participating. Uh, my name is Kiana Campbell and I'm a university recruiter at Sander. And I'm going to pass it over to the rest of the folks who will be speaking to you today. Hi, I'm Kristen Howarth. I'm a senior technology recruiter at Sander, and I work out of Portland, Oregon, and I support the West Coast offices. My name is Sinead. I am a senior recruiter here at Xander. I support our technology product teams. And hi, I'm Ashley Hemingway. I lead the product design team, which is a team of designers and user researchers who build our product interfaces. And I work remote from the Chicago suburbs. Perfect. Thank you all for joining. We're actually going to have a couple of other folks participating. So you'll see them coming in um, as we kick off our panel. And I'm excited to see everyone's adding in their city and where they're calling in from. Uh, it's funny, I actually see some team members at Xander. So welcome to you as well, which is even better for our audience. You have tons of folks who can answer your questions, whether it's us on screen or even through the chat function. So definitely leverage that. Um, as we kick off our presentation. So as we kick off, 
I do want to give some context on advertising and analytics. So with this presentation, I'm going to show we'll get started on sharing a bit more about the industry and where it's been. So advertising and analytics is a unique space where we started out in the 19th century with newspapers and radio ads to reach consumers. Yet today we are able to evolve so much in which we're targeting you and I as consumers based on your own interests within the matter of milliseconds. So there's still many questions and unknowns about the industry since it's so quick and it evolves so fast paced. And with that, there are misconceptions and assumptions that candidates tend to have, even myself as a recruiter, about the industry, especially when how to get your foot in the door. So we're hosting this session today for you all to diminish those misconceptions and provide insight on how you as a candidate or potential candidate can stand out in the advertising and analytics space. So with that, we kind of already did this get to know you, but again, we want to get to know you throughout the session. So in the comment section, as Char, Char mentioned, put your name, your location, but even on an addition, what made you interested in joining this session today? Nice, I'm excited to see the comments come in. Great. And now that you know a bit about us, I'm going to pass it over to Kristen, who's going to share what we'll be speaking about today and a bit more about who we are as Xander. Thanks, Kiana. So we're going to talk about how to stand out as a candidate in the advertising and analytics space. And we want to give you an opportunity to get to know us, learn a bit more about Xander. And what is advertising? What do we do? What does advertising look like today? And then we also wanted to do a panel discussion so you can get to meet with employees at Xander, hear their role in the company, how they can give you some advice on how to stand out as a candidate. And then we're going to end with an open Q&A. And at the end, we'll give you an opportunity to put some questions in the chat as well. And we also wanted to give you an opportunity to get to know us as Xander and who are we and what we do. So what is Xander? We're an ad tech company focused on digital advertising for television, video, and mobile. And we're a leader in the space, which is exciting to see how much we've grown and really transformed with advertising. Advertisers and publishers use Xander's platform to target specific audiences and use them at a much larger scale. Xander has now joined with Warner Media, so we're very excited about that. We joined with Warner Media in order to monetize content from HBO Max, Warner Brothers, CNN, CBS, TNT, as well as Cartoon Network, NBA, and MLB. And we have a new CEO, Jason Kyler. We're very excited about Jason. Jason was the founding CEO of Hulu, and he started Hulu back in 2013 when he took over as CEO. And then Vessel, which is a digital video service that he later sold to Verizon. So we're really excited about his background. He'll be joining Xander and World Media as of May 1st as our new CEO. And with Xander, we've had tremendous growth. Uh, we have 2,500 employees with 31 global offices, and our headquarters is based in New York. And now we wanted to go to introduce the panelists and just learn a little bit more about what they um, but do we have, do we have everyone, Kiana? Were we able to get all the panelists? I think we're still waiting on a few panelists, but um, while we do that, I will uh, introduce everyone. We do have an exciting panelist today, and we are so excited to hear their feedback and have them answer some questions and prepare you all on how to, you know, best prepare yourself for opportunities once you graduate. And so um, today we are having at least associate data scientist. Um, we also will be Eddie Ajay, who is a senior software engineer. Um, Ashley Hemingway, who you see now on your screen, uh, she is a senior director over, and she leads our product design team. And uh, last but certainly not least, Casey Rainey, who is the manager here at 
So we're going to give it a few minutes and see if we can get everyone uh, to join and we'll get started with the panelist question. Some of the comments in the chat. So plugging in to learn more about ad tech and analytics at Xander. Excited for us too. We're super excited. Thank you for joining. And I love all the locations. West Coast, I see West Coast, woohoo! New York. Thank you so much. Hopping in to learn more about the analytics space. Very nice. Thank you everyone for joining we're excited. And feel free to chat if there's any specific questions. I know at the end, we're gonna have an open Q&A. Feel free, if you wanted to start putting some questions in the chat, we can know what to address later. So please feel free to put some questions in there and that way we can get to it later on. Minutes. Yeah, I think the admin is trying to add more panelists. Everybody, we're excited. We want you to see everyone because we have some technology folks. Um, so we wanted to give you a chance to chat with them as well. And while we're waiting, um, maybe we could talk a little bit about how long we've been at Xander, if you want to learn more about us and what we do. Uh, so again, I'm Kristen Howarth. I'm on the technology recruiting team. And I joined Xander back in 2018. So I've been here for two years now. Um, it's gone by very quickly. And it's been an exciting space to learn a little bit more. Um, ooh, we have a question. Um, Ashley, this is for you. They said, would you be able to share some of the product design work that you've done? Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure if the question is wanting to see visuals or just hear a little bit about it. Um, I don't think I have any visuals prepared or I don't know what I can share, but let me follow up on the visual piece. Um, but yeah, as far as the actual work that we do, if you think about the fact that we have an advertising platform that has both a buy side and a sell side. So just for some context, I joined a company called AppNexus in 2012, and then AppNexus was acquired to, and became Xander. So AppNexus was focused on digital advertising, so like like online website advertising. Um, so we had both a buy side interface and a sell side interface. So an advertiser or often an agency who's working on their behalf would log into our system and they would do things like set up their campaigns, put in their budgets, attach the creative or the ad they want to serve, um, target the audience they want or the kind of um, places they want their ad to run. So we have this buy side product that we look after and then we have a sell side product where um, website owners or publishers are able to figure out what kinds of ads that can run on their site and how much money they want for them and they have a lot of controls as well. So my team looks after uh, those interfaces for the buy side and the sell side and sometimes there's some pieces in the middle. And now that we're in the AT&T and Warner context, we now have television on top of that. So now we have television buy side and sell side. And in the long future, we're thinking about how those um, digital and TV products, which are separate today, could be integrated in the future. So if I'm an advertiser, I could put my budget into the system and spend money across traditional like website advertising and also television or video advertising. So that's mostly what my team focuses on and we do a lot of usability testing and stuff like that to help us make good decisions. Awesome, thank you, Ashley. Right. And it looks like we have we have two uh, two more of our panelists have joined, and we're still waiting on one more person, but we're just going to get started. So, welcome everyone. Uh, we are so excited. Let's kick off the the question. Um, and so, our first question, and I'm going to pass it off to you to you, Elise, will be. Are you working in the industry or job that you studied in college? And ultimately, what led you to Xander? Hi, everybody. It's so great to be here. Um, I actually majored in economics when I was in school, and I focused on something called econometrics, which is like 
economics, um, studying economic variables through mathematical equations. And um, when I got to out of college, I knew that I wanted to learn about how to integrate that with data analytics, data science. Um, and so I took my first job at AT&T and I was doing a non-technical data analytics type role. And I really enjoyed that, but I wanted to get more technical. So I spent some time learning Python, learning machine learning techniques, et cetera. Um, and then I started with Xander in January and now I am an associate data scientist. And that's kind of my journey through my role. Awesome. Thank you, Elise. Um, Ashley, would you mind asking that question? Yeah, sure. Um, and I just wanted to say, you know, I know this has been a, a tough summer for everybody and probably some of the plans that you had for the start of your career maybe aren't going how you expected. Um, but for me personally, some of the most important moments of my own career were things that happened that were outside of my control. Um, and one example of that is I initially wanted to major in graphic design and there's a good program near me and I spent all of my senior year preparing this amazing portfolio and then I didn't get accepted into that program but I was offered a backup seat in this new program called digital design and I thought well whatever I'll take it and then I'll just transfer back into graphic design and I ended up taking it and sticking with it and now that's the career that I have today and you know a lot of times I interviewed for jobs that I thought were my dream job or like a job that I have to have I didn't get it, I ended up taking something else and that opened up a door that I wouldn't have had or I met a mentor that I wouldn't have known. And sometimes even taking jobs that aren't, you know, don't take jobs that you think are a terrible fit, but take, take, a, take a chance and try something new because even if it's not the best fit for you long term, you'll learn a lot about yourself and what works for you and what doesn't. And I, you know, I've worked a lot of different places early on in my career and that helped me know that when I interviewed at Xander, that that was an environment I really could see myself in long term and I could build a career there. And so that was a place I kind of settled and went from an individual contributor to someone who's now leading a team. So, you know, I think just be intentional about the decisions you make, but also be willing to be flexible because that's, you know, something that I found really helpful, even though it was hard at first when I was able to embrace it, I ended up getting, um, having those doors open that I otherwise was like having trouble finding. Yeah, so me, uh, I'm an engineering manager, as, as I mentioned earlier. So for, for me, uh, I, I studied computer science. Uh, I went to Oregon State University <clears throat> and studied software engineering. And uh, for the work that I, I've been doing at Xander, and at the time it was at Nexus when I first joined, uh, it was an opportunity for me to be able to, uh, to grow my, my skills as a software engineer. I had been in a company previously and kind of somewhat peaked out previously. And uh, the, the culture of learn and teach is, is really uh, what, what drew me to AppNexus and Xander. And it turned out to be a really great benefit. Uh, I was able to really significantly grow as an engineer and a technical leader. And you know, I started off as an individual contributor and uh, worked my way up into an engineering leadership position. But, uh, uh, but yeah, the, the computer science definitely you know, provided me with the fundamentals I needed to be able to, uh, to grow as a software engineer, but yeah. Thank you, thank you all. That was great, great uh, feedback, great information. Now, our next question would be, um, and this is for if you're managing managing a team, um, what do you look for in a candidate when hiring for your team? And if you don't have a team that you're managing right now, you can kind of share some insight on how you prepared uh, for your interview um, when you were interviewing for a specific role. I'll kick it off to you, Elise. Um, as you mentioned, Sinead, I actually don't have a team, um, but I'll share some advice since I interviewed with Xander pretty um, recently in, in January. So uh, some advice that someone gave me when I was interviewing was um, to be kind of cu always curious and always enthusiastic about the role. Um, I think that a as a new person, as especially new to data science, um, it was not so much experience that they were looking for, but rather um, curiosity and excitement and willingness to learn about things. And so I think that um, from a perspective of a boss, or at least my boss, what he kind of expressed to me was um, to always be curious, be excited about this, and, and it'll pass it on to your team and people will be excited to work with you and want to work with you um, if you're looking forward to learning more about the role. So.
Yeah, I would say it's interesting when I think about, you know, an entry level position versus internship. So for an internship, we know kind of the time box around that and we would pick projects that are um, suited to that time frame. But one of the things that's really interesting about our company and our industry is it's very technically complex. And so for a full time hire, if you were targeting like your first entry level job, um, one thing that's kind of different is when I hire a new full-time person, we don't really expect them to work independently for the first three months because our product is so much to learn and so much to onboard them. And of course, we're helping them along the way and they're But because our product is so complex, I often look for long-term fit with the candidates that I'm interviewing because I don't want to hire someone that like six months, nine months later, they're ready to move on to the next thing and we have to start over retraining somebody. So if you are targeting a very like technically complex industry, um, I think being able to show that like what you're interested in is what that company does is really important. Like a lot of times I talk to candidate design candidates um, and I, a question that I often ask is, do you prefer to work on enterprise products versus consumer products? And sometimes they'll say, I prefer consumer products. And then I think, well, maybe that's not a good fit because what we do is very different than that. Um, or I have other candidates that say, I don't care. I like both. And I think they're trying to be flexible. But, you know, that just leads me to think that maybe they don't understand some of those differences or maybe what we do isn't something that they would find interesting long term. And frankly, when people leave my team after a short time with my team, it's usually for a less complex or a consumer facing product. So that's something I screen for is like, do they like the kind of work that enterprise work is? It's very different than consumer work. And so knowing that that's what they're interested in, I think, hey, we might be a long term fit for this person. They'll be able to grow with us long term. And that makes them a more attractive candidate when I'm looking at, you know, different candidates in different backgrounds. Uh, I'd like to build on top of that with what Ashley had built about or mentioned about uh, our, our software being very complex. Uh, there's a lot of education, a lot of complexity that we have to think about. So uh, when I'm looking for candidates, uh, definitely looking for somebody that is a, an excellent problem solver with a, a strong problem solving ability. Um, not always looking for like a particular uh, you know, expertise in a specific software. I want to make sure that they have some background in software that aligns with, with what the team is doing. But being able to be a strong problem solver is going to go a lot a lot further. So I think that's that's really important. Uh, along with that, I, I do look for somebody that's the, that lifelong learner. Uh, the technology industry, the software that we use, uh, you know, in the front end uh, development, API development, and even in RTP, uh, the industry is changing all of the time. We need somebody that can keep up with that, that technology and be able to bring, you know, uh, cutting edge solutions just because uh, because of that complexity. And it allows us to be able to manage that uh, and build build scalable, robust solutions. Uh, so that that's definitely very important. Uh, and then somebody that also is going to embrace that that learn and teach uh, value that we have at our company. Uh, that's that's also very important. So um, what we we often will do is we'll have like a, a brown bag session where. Uh, somebody on the team may have found out uh, about a new piece of software that may be valuable uh, for our team or maybe uh, some of the other our colleagues across uh, the company. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of open it up, have a session and like, hey, I learned this. It's valuable for us and maybe valuable for you as well. But uh, somebody that's going to be able to bring that to the team is, is very important. Uh, and also looking for, for candidates that are software about or passionate about software development. Uh, you know, looking at people that have a side project, like a passion project they work on, somebody that's contributing to open source, it really demonstrates that uh, they, they care about their craft and they, they're, they're passionate about it. Um, we want to be able to bring that passion and motivation to the software that we're developing because it definitely shows in the solutions that, that we roll out. Awesome, awesome, thank you. I, I do want to add is when you're interviewing, make sure that you have a clear understanding of what you're looking for um, in the company that you're interviewing with. And if you're not 100% sure, make sure that you have questions allocated so that you can ask the interviewers and you can get a clear understanding, not only if um, you're a right fit for the company, but if the company is the right fit for, your, for you. So let's see. So our next question is going to be, what can candidates do to stand out from the crowd, especially during COVID? For instance, we're all working from home right now, and that's a challenge in itself. So what advice do you have for candidates to stand out during uh, during COVID?
I'm sorry, go ahead, Elise. So um, I'm not gonna, <laughs> you're good. Um, so I'm not gonna deny that it's challenging. Um, it's definitely challenging to stand out over video. It's challenging to work over video, honestly. Um, but we've been dealt the, the hand and, and we're gonna work with it. Um, so what I would say, my piece of advice stand out during this time, during virtual meetings, during um, virtual events, et cetera, I would say overemphasize, over communicate, over be over enthusiastic, um, overly do a lot of things. The more effort you put in, the more you'll stand out. I think that sometimes communication can get lost virtually. It can be really hard to tell how you're feeling, what, um, what you're, you know, uh, motivation is, etc. So if you're overly passionate and you're overly communicative, that will come across so much easier if you're overemphasizing those things. And and the more you can do that, the more you can put yourself out there, put yourself in front of people, the more um, you'll be able to get that across. And so just keep overemphasizing things. I know I've said that word a lot now, um, but I guess I'm getting across the point, right? So um, that would be that would be my piece of advice on how to stand out during coronavirus. Yeah, I think one of the biggest challenges as a hiring manager during COVID is, um, well, the hiring process is different, obviously, but then when we hire someone, onboarding is a really big challenge because normally we would be there in person to like help them get their laptop set up or we could take you out to lunch so you could like build relationships with the team or if you have a problem, you can turn your desk chair around and ask somebody and we lose all of that now. So. As a manager, I worry for new team members. Maybe they need more support than we can provide, or you know, maybe they'll feel disconnected. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that um, when I'm talking to candidates, that I'm meeting with candidates that are really proactive, strong communicators, willing to like not only focus on the work stuff, which is really important, but the kind of person that would like grab time with different members of the team to have a coffee break on WebEx and just kind of build those relationships. Um, because I want to make sure that the candidate can be a connected team member who's contributing to our team culture and not just kind of floating off on their own. So, um, you know, I think in your interviews or your cover letters, definitely reference the core role description, but also talk about how you'll fit into the team and the team culture, even if you are remote. And don't be afraid to like show some personality and think of ways that like we can connect with you as a person and remember you. Um, because ultimately, you know, we're working together day in and day out and we want to have that personal relationship too and feel like we're on the same side, even if we're not in the same room. Yeah, from my perspective, uh, being able to demonstrate your experience if you're in an interview and, uh, you know, we're, like I mentioned previously, we're all working remotely right now. So having those, those strong skills as a remote employee, I think is very important. I'm going to, you know, Re-emphasize remote communication. That's very, very important. Like uh, Elise pointed out, uh, and, and Ashley as well. Uh, the other thing too is, I think if you've, I think even in any situation, you know, if you're coming to an interview, uh, demonstrating that you've done some research about the company. You know, I think if you show up and you really don't know what the company does or can't ask those smart questions, I think it'll it'll show. So you know, do your research. You know, basically you need to demonstrate like why you want to work here. Um, so I think that's that kind of help that will help you stand out. Uh, the other thing too is you know if you're applying for um, uh, a an engineering job, uh, software engineering, uh, being able to demonstrate concretely the your your work, I think that's important too. So if you can say like, hey, you know, check out my GitHub. I've got a bunch of uh, you know here's my repositories, things I've worked on, and uh, you know if you're also you know a student and looking for an internship. You know, even if you've got some like school related things, I think that's that's helpful. Uh, just be able to kind of demonstrate some of the things you have done. Uh, CodePin is another uh, another software piece of software you can use, or it's like a web based service. You kind of post examples of things you've built. But being able to demonstrate that you're like, hey, I'm interested. Here's some things I've worked on. I see how they're related to you know this position is for a UI role or something like that. That that's really helpful. Um, but Definitely, uh, you have to demonstrate that you're a strong communicator, uh, you know, for the team because you're going to have to look. When when you are remote, you have to look for different ways to be able to stay engaged with your, your team. Ashley touched on that, um, but yeah, that's that's definitely something that I would emphasize as well. Thank you. Um, our next question is: 
are there any resources that you all would recommend for students looking to get jobs in the advertising and analytics space? This is just an open question for anyone who has any uh, resources to share. Uh, I can go. So uh, there's some, some industry magazines, I'd say, at least for, for ad tech. Uh, that we I, I refer to, they're kind of giving up up to date like what's going on in the industry. There's like Ad Age, uh, and then some other magazines like that that you can subscribe to uh, on Reddit. I, I subscribe to there's an AdOps subreddit. It's kind of interesting seeing some of the questions that come up. You know, some of it has to do with the technology that that um, Xander offers. Some of it's uh, our, our competitors and other people in the industry. But it's interesting to kind of see what the customers are are uh, you know asking about, asking their peers about. So I, that's I find that. You know, to, to give an idea of what's going on. Um, and then one of the things I know is maybe less relevant, but uh, and I, I try to chat with my peers internally to try to understand about other parts of the stack. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with, with my area that I, my team works on. But then uh, the other thing, too, is that I'll uh, reach out to other, other engineers, other engineering leaders, trying to put some time on the calendar, like, hey, tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, what you're working on. You know, educate me so I can know more about this stack rather than just being a black box where you know we'll we'll throw some bits at and then bits come back. You know, it's it's nice to be able to to kind of understand what's going on inside that box. But uh, yeah, I'd say you know net, networking is really important there too. But uh, that kind of give you an idea of where you can kind of reach out online and kind of figure out like what sort of questions to start asking. Yeah, just to plus one what Casey said. I'll um, add um, John's Media's little uh, black book series. That's a really great one. That's what introduced me to advertising. Um, so I really enjoy that. And then from a data science perspective, um, Kaggle is a huge one. I think Casey keeps mentioning like industry knowledge, um, like on hand experience, open source, really great. Um, and then just re you know attending conferences, reading things online. KDD is coming up. So if you want to sign up for that, that's a really great one. Um, yeah. Yeah, and one thing that Casey said that isn't exactly a resource, I think an important thing I want to highlight is like, don't be afraid of asking quote unquote dumb questions. Like, I feel like people are very worried early in their career about looking dumb like they don't know anything, but the truth is like none of us know everything. There's not one person in the company who can explain the product end to end. So like, you know, sometimes it seems like I might be asking Casey a dumb question because I'm not an engineer and he's an engineer and he's an expert in that and he may ask me questions that are like quote unquote dumb design questions but i'm an expert in that and he's new to it so that's fine and that's normal and don't be afraid of that um other resources other than the subreddit which is great um there's an email newsletter called ratko r-a-t-k-o and he does a really cool write-up i think it's weekly about just kind of like the trends in advertising um, advertising is also in the news a lot, you know, set up some Google alerts or something, but you see privacy laws are changing frequently that is affecting the kind of thing that we do. Um, lots of like content providers are coming out with new streaming platforms that affects us a lot. So just like staying up with the news is really important. And then I'm going to throw out one more weird one that has nothing to do with advertising, but I think is a good career builder. Everyone from Xander is probably going to roll their eyes when they hear me say this, but the television show Survivor has probably applied more to my job than almost anything in the world. Um, one day I will give a TED talk about it, but um, it's a show that's about human dynamics and it's about gaining consensus with diverse groups of people, collaborating with people that you may not like personally, thinking about other people's motivations and aligning with that. So that's my like side tip of the day is spend some of your quarantine time, go watch Survivor, it's fantastic and will teach you a lot about just like working with other people. One more shameless plug. Uh, we have, I'm gonna drop a link in the channel too. So we have the Xander Wiki, which actually has industry information in there beyond just like how to use our products. Uh, there's a lot of like intro to ad tech in there in the, the uh, industry information section. And also we use a ton of acronyms in our, our industry. And it seems like there's a new acronym every week. This has quite a few of them listed in there as well, but uh, yeah, I, another another plug for for our documentation. We have a we have a documentation team here too that rolls out a lot of wonderful documentation, and that's there's a lot of information on that, that wiki page.
Thank you. And I have one one last question from our list of questions for the panelists would be, what is the best piece of advice someone gave you or that you've learned in your early career? Elise? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Um, so the question is, what is the best piece of advice someone gave you or that you've learned in your early career? Yeah, um, the best piece of advice that someone gave me, I think um, my first boss gave me a really great piece of advice. Um, she kind of said to me, don't be afraid to ask for things that you want or things that um, you might might want to do. This could be like a job um, or a project. I recently was like, can I work on this project? I really am excited about it. Um, I think that sometimes, especially for me or, or you know, I think women in general, um, it can be hard to know your own worth and, and really be confident about asking for things. Um, and so I think that uh, just reminding yourself a little bit consistently to, um, if there's something that you want, go for it, ask for it, um, stand up. And so that's kind of stuck with me for, you know, my, my career so far. And, and I think it's a really great piece of advice for, um, for everybody. I'm gonna cheat and give you two, one for interviewing and one for actual like choosing a role. Um, the interview tip is, I think a lot of people prepare for interviews where, with um, all of these success stories that they wanna share because they wanna show about the projects they did that went well and I get that, you do wanna make a good impression. But as a hiring manager, sometimes my favorite stories to hear about are stories where something went wrong or maybe you had a failure um, because every job has successes and challenges and it's easy for anybody on a team to do well when it's smooth sailing and I want to look for candidates that can handle the tough stuff. So don't be afraid to share examples that are like quote unquote negative examples as long as you think about how you want to share that and show that, you know, that was a, an opportunity for you to learn or to change and improve over time. And then as far as like um, advice for choosing the right job or thinking about which role, um, this could be different post COVID. I don't know now that so many people are working remote, but a really important thing for me personally was being open to trying something new or even relocating. Um, I'm originally from Ohio, but I moved to New York to work in tech. And not only were the salaries higher, but there were a lot more job opportunities and a lot of networking. And then we've since relocated from my partner's job to Chicago and um, you know, we'll see if companies still have a lot of flexibility with remote work in a year or two, and maybe it's not even relocating for you. Maybe it's trying a new industry or a company type that you may not have originally targeted. But I, I find that, you know, people who have very specific criteria for their career path that are like, it has to be this kind of job at this kind of company and within 30 minutes of my house, like you're really limiting yourself to your options. So when you're early in your career, especially, you know, it's the time to branch out and try new things. And if not now, then when? So don't be afraid to like push yourself outside of your comfort zone and you may find that it opens up some opportunities for you that you might not have had otherwise. Uh, I've got a couple of pieces of advice as well. So, uh, you know, during, an, during an interview, I would say it's, it's really important to make sure that you are interviewing as much as you are being interviewed. Uh, I think it's really important to make sure that you are vetting the company you're interviewing for to make sure that this is going to be a, a good fit. Uh, you, you may think that the job sounds interesting, but you're going to be working with your coworkers and uh, in that industry doing this around work for a good period of time. And, you know, going from job to job is not always easy. And uh, so I think it's, it's just you want to make sure that it's a really good fit for you as much as the the people that are interviewing you are trying to vet and make sure that you're a good fit for them. So I think that's that's really important to uh, make it, make sure your interview is, as much as possible is like a two way street. It shouldn't be just like, you know, kind of drilling you on, on questions. I think that's, that's really important to make sure that it's a mutual good fit. The uh, second piece of advice, I think this is kind of a career piece of advice or, you know, as you're developing solutions, uh, one of the challenges that I've seen over time is, you know, you'll get responses from people and ask them like, why are we doing it this way? And they'll be like, oh, we're doing it just because that's the way we do it. And, you know, I, I think you have to be really cautious about that in your career, uh, because if you get stuck in that rut, you'll never 
have the opportunity to innovate and really change, bring change. So uh, you need to make sure that uh, you you ask why. I mean, you, you, they could be done done respectfully, and uh, but make sure that you're you're thinking about the the problem holistically, and you know, not fall into the rut of, you know, I'm doing this because that's the way we we do things. You know, when it comes to thinking about that in the context of problem solving, or uh, Thank you. And I, I want to thank you very much for taking some time of your day and joining our panelists today. Um, we really appreciate it. And you gave some awesome advice. Um, we were not able to have Ed, Eddie a Jay on. Drop some wonderful links in the chat uh, to some technology related articles as well as some advertisement um, articles. So uh, feel free and, and be sure to check out those um, links from Eddie. Um, I'm going to kick it off to Kristen, who's going to be taking some questions from the chat. So uh, feel free to put in any any other questions that you may have. Yeah, feel free to put questions in the chat. We're excited. So let's start with a couple of questions coming in. Hi, I'm a grad student from NU Boston, graduating in 15 days. So congrats. That's exciting. Um, working on digital analytics. Uh, what should be an X factor to stand out from other applicants during the job search? So maybe you could, Elise or Ashley, one of you mind helping on that one? Yeah, mine's a little different because I'm in design. So we look at portfolios. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's interesting because from a DNI perspective, we don't, we actually went through a process. Ashley, did you want to go first? Oh, sorry, I might have a delay. <laughs> You caught up? Um, yeah, I can go first. Um, so I think the main thing is, whether it's a portfolio, resume, cover letter, whatever, definitely invest in personal branding so that I, when I see different pieces of your um, overall application, I can visually reference them and tie them together because we see a lot of names and it's hard. Like I work with Sinead, she knows. It's hard for me to keep track of all these names when I'm like hiring, there's just so many people. And so anything you can do to like have a personal brand that's memorable, um, if you have a website, put a photo of you on there. Like it's hard to do all of this through a computer. So anything that helps you feel like a person to me and something that when I see it, I remember, oh, I saw that previously. I think is really helpful and helps you stand out in my memory when we speak again. Elise, maybe from the data science side. If you don't have portfolio, do data scientists have portfolios? But what are you looking at? Hey, can you, okay, so um, I think that uh, in order, some of the things that you can uh, do specifically, I kind of mentioned a bunch of them, but like um, Kaggle competitions, um, having some industry experience is helpful. So doing any kind of like specific stuff that you can um, do in that area, like like again, like just grabbing data sets off of line, those are free. Um, those would be really helpful. Another thing that I just want to throw out there, especially for students uh, who want to stand out, a lot of um, more more junior folks who have like a shorter resume or a shorter portfolio, they round out their professional experience by doing volunteer projects or by doing like hypothetical projects, which is great. There's nothing wrong with that. But one mistake I see some folks make who want to work in the enterprise or B2B space is they pick self-directed projects that are very simple or consumer facing. Um, because they're easy to do yourself, right? Like you can interview your grandma or you can interview people on the subway or whatever because it's just handy and easy. Um, but it doesn't have very strong correlation to the kind of work that we do. If you think about our product being very, very complex workflows, very heavy on the data side, seeing like an app that helps you order lunch isn't like necessarily the best like indicator of those skills. So if you are doing a hypothetical project or doing some volunteer work, try to find a project space or find a volunteer opportunity that kind of mimics some of the things that you see in the tech or enterprise space. Like look for complexity, look for things that have a very targeted user base. Um, things like that that have some parallels because that way at least if you're doing hypothetical work as a hiring manager I can see, hey, that's very similar to the work that we would have you be doing for real. Yeah, I think, uh, so Natalie just added a question about that recently too in the chat here, asking about, you know, if your experience is only school, 
you know, and you don't have that that job experience to be able to put on your resume. Again, I think it like you know having that portfolio, uh, you know, from from an engineering perspective, also is is important as well. So I think the other the key thing here too is if you're looking at a job posting, there's normally like a listing of the skills that are being asked for, and really like if you're gonna you shouldn't shouldn't always submit the same resume. I, I I'd like to stress that. So basically, like if you look at the job posting that's there. That is your template on what your the the recruiter or the hiring manager is going to be looking for, so you really should like form your resume to highlight those pieces that they are looking for. I mean, this is one way to make sure that your not your resume doesn't get filtered out, because I think uh, I've seen that mistake before where people will send out a very generic resume that has like every single every single skill that this person has has uh, uh, had has had some sort of experience or familiarity with, and that's not always relevant to what we're looking for. We want to make sure that we just you know, you want to touch on these key points that uh, that is listed in the uh, in the job posting. So make sure you highlight those sort of things, and then emphasize the the relevant experience. Or if you don't have that, that school experience, you know, have uh, you know, link to a GitHub repository that may have some code. Maybe you could build it in a quick example to be able to demonstrate your skills. Um, that shows you have some sort of basic concrete knowledge of or uh, of of that technology. Uh, for example, you know, uh, my team, uh, one of the responsibilities is going to be UI engineering. Uh, we use a lot of React, Redux, things like that. So if I saw a resume from a foreign internship that somebody said, hey, I do have some experience with uh, uh, React and Redux, and you linked to a GitHub repo that I could look at the code and see what you, you know, your demonstrated experience, I think that would be uh, a, one way to definitely stand out rather than just listing and saying, I have. You know, I have worked with React. Being able to concretely uh, show that experience, I think, is one way to really stand out. And like I said, use that job posting as your template to build your resume. Just don't send a generic resume. And quality is more important than quantity. Even for more senior people who have deeper resumes, I'd rather see a portfolio with like four really strong projects than a project with like 30 projects that are really shallow. A lot of times people will share like the end result of their project, but they don't show how they got there. And I want to see the process worker, to Casey's point. We want to see the code. We want to see the mock-ups. We want to see the sketches you did on the whiteboard. Like, we want to see how you got there. So I'd go deeper on fewer projects um, rather than try to, like, come up with as many as you can. I think that kind of fits in with, like, the, you know, in college, they say show your work. And so if you can show your work, that gives us an idea of how you problem solve or come up with your solutions. And that's very, very important and will help you stand out. And there's a good point. Um, Eddie Ajay, he, he was one of the senior software engineers at Xander, and he posted in the chat, he said, be honest during an interview is so important because it lets the panel know what you can do and what you can't do. And don't forget to show that you're willing to learn and grow. I think I help a lot on the technology recruiting side. And one of the things I look for on the phone screen before I send it over to someone like Casey, I want to see how you problem solve. So even if you don't know the answer, can you walk me through similar code? Can you walk me through how you went about solving that? Because if I can see that skill set, that's something that will be so important. I think whether you want to work in technology or any aspect of ad tech, um, our ability to see that's going to be really helpful. And I know we're running close on time, just four minutes left. Um, so I wanted to make sure maybe we can get to one other question. So this is for the panel plus recruiters. What is the X factor? I love this, the X factor. You gave some good pointers, but if I'm an applicant and a new grad applying to Xander and there's so many applicants I have to sift through, what advice can you give me on how to stand out? What would make you look at my resume and what can I do to make sure I go to the top? So that's a great question. So I'm happy to start on the recruiting side. I think if you take the opportunity to actually read what we do and tailor your resume a little bit. So let's say you're a senior software engineer and you're working on front end, make sure to list that. And Ashley brought up a good point earlier, list maybe the top three to four projects that you're working on and how that could be applicable to Xander. And don't forget a cover letter. I know sometimes you can't, but if you do have an opportunity to make it personal, um, I had someone write me on LinkedIn saying, hey, Kristen, I saw your posting. Here's what I love about this project. Here's what I'm excited about the team. And here's my most recent projects I'm working on. That'll 
at least from my recruiter eyes, will absolutely, you know, be one of the things to put you towards the top. Um, Casey, was there anything else you could add on maybe the X factor or how to stand out? Yeah, I think uh, I think just kind of a summary of, of, of what we talked about so far. I think like uh, you know, making sure that you, if you're able to give us some concrete examples of uh, maybe some small projects you've worked on, uh, I think that's that's really helpful. You know, if you contribute to open source, highlight that. Uh, and the other thing, like Ashley pointed out, quality over quantity is is definitely important. Yeah, and if your resume is like already a very close match for the job, maybe you need less explanation. But say you're someone that's doing a bit of a career switch or you're at a moment where your resume doesn't necessarily match one to one with what this role is about, you know me through the journey of like why this role is interesting to you then, because otherwise I'm making a lot of assumptions and I'm thinking, oh, this person just applied to like five million jobs on Indeed and they have no clue what this is about. But sometimes it's a candidate that's maybe just a non-traditional candidate that actually is making a switch, and I want to understand that. So if it's a cover letter, if it's a little blurb at the top or something, just like help me see how what you've done in the past applies to this. And if it doesn't, like why are you moving into this? Yes, that's great, Ashley. I was just going to say that if you don't have any experience in that specific industry, definitely write a cover letter and kind of explain why you're interested, what have, what research have you done on your end to tie um, your interest to the role? So have you gone on any of the advertising and analytics sites? Have you learned, have you read any technology blogs? Just what have you done on your end to, um, to uh, show us that you're interested in this role and you're prepared to, you know, kind of come into this industry? So. And thank you so much. I know we're at time, but thank you for the great questions. Please on LinkedIn. Um, I'm happy to put my LinkedIn in the chat. It's Kristen Howarth. You'll see Sinead Binky, Ashley Hemingway, Casey Rainey. Thank you so much. We appreciate you taking the time. Yes, awesome. Thank you so much to the Xander team. This was amazing. Um, I know there was a lot of really great questions in the chat that we didn't get to. So um, as Kristen mentioned, feel free to reach out to them um, on LinkedIn. Um, thank you again to everybody for joining. Um, just an FYI that we'll be sending out a form for folks to fill out. Um, so if you do wanna share your info, um, with the Xander recruiting team. Um, do make sure to uh, fill that out. Uh, we also wanted to say congrats to Varun Gonka for being this session's resume review winner. So congratulations. Um, we'll follow up with um, an email to intro you to your resume reviewer. Um, join us tomorrow for a technical interview workshop with NetApp. And on Friday, IMC Trading will also be hosting a workshop. All right. Have a great rest of your week, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.